over this weekend because of the plan of the Marxists that there may be actual blood shed in the protests and other organized events, specifically in D.C. and in other places of the nation. They set up everything for this to happen, and I'm going to prove it to you tonight. I'm hoping that I'm wrong, even though I don't think I am. And I hope that someone watching this will perhaps not go to a protest or convince a loved one not to go to a protest. Because if they do, they may end up being sacrificial lambs, if you will, in a very seditious, insidious, demonic plot by the deep state to push civil unrest and a new civil conflict here in our nation. This is a serious topic, folks. Strap in. Thanks for joining us on the Black Azure Patriot channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. The Weather Underground in the 1960s for that <coughs> violent group. Joining me now is Terry Turchie, former FBI deputy yeah, that's Bill Ayers and author of the book In Their Own Words. Yeah. Terry, these videos are hard to watch. They're not being reported on by the other networks, which is a stunning dereliction of journalistic duty. What's not being shown and what's not fully being reported by the mainstream media, the actual chaos and mob violence that is taking place right now. They are characterizing everything that you're seeing as a peaceful protest. The protest is peaceful. There are clips go out there. I'm not going to show clips of any of large gatherings on here because if I do, this video gets suppressed and you will not be able to see it. Go on Twitter. It's all over there. Literally, you've got someone reporting that this is mostly a peaceful protest while there is a building burning behind them. You have them uh, saying, yeah, these people are just frustrated while projectiles are being thrown at them by retreating protesters. I mean, I've seen these with my own eyes. They're on Twitter. Look them up. Um, you know, it, it's, just, it's just disingenuous what they're doing. What are they doing? They are painting the picture. By they, I mean the mainstream media that these are just peaceful protests because they're setting people up for a very, very dangerous situation. I'll be getting to that in just a little bit later in tonight's video. Uh, but what's the similarity with the weather underground, and why is that so jarring to you for people who aren't still aren't familiar with that group? Sure, many people weren't even born uh, at that time. The Weather Underground War was a group back in the uh, 1970s, and they were responsible for well over 2,000 bombings and attacks on government institutions, businesses in uh, the United States. And uh, certainly uh, they had a major goal, and that goal was to foment a uh, communist revolution. They called themselves communist-minded men and women. And in 1974, they authored a document called Prairie Fire, and they outlined their strategy, and they outlined the way they could get to that strategy and actually bring down the U.S. government. We saw during that time frame massive protests, hundreds of thousands of people in the streets, uh, kind of marshaled by the aftermath of the Vietnam War, then Watergate, and they, they used those protests to get where they wanted to go. But and that is why I'm making this video. They are using these protests to get where they want to go. And guess how they're using these protests? They're using protesters. They're using American citizens as pawn and in their sick power grab game. Then they got scattered as the FBI was effective and running them down. And eventually many of them left the country. Uh, ultimately, uh, the Weather Underground kind of went out of business. But they left Prairie Fire behind. What was their strategy? This was a 180-page uh, document. Their strategy was called resistance. Not too long, maybe about five minutes after President Trump won the election in 2016, Democratic Party leaders came out and they said, we're going to uh, resist. We're going to embark upon a strategy of resistance to the president. But that's, not, uh, that's only the beginning. The document, the Prairie Fire document, actually contained six points that the Weather Underground felt very important about. These were the planning points that would bring about this revolution. 
Uh, they wanted We're going to put them on destroyed. screen, Terry, so people can see what you're talking okay. about. Go through them briefly. And this is what we're seeing now. Destroy capitalism. For those of you that think this is just starting now and this wasn't a long game plan, let me remind you. <laughs> Destroy capitalism. The first major civil unrest, uh, civil action protest in the recent era was what? Occupy Wall Street during the Obama years. Oh, and what else did we see? The weapon of choice, systemic racism and police racism. When did the whole movement start? When did the whole hands up, don't shoot start? Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I don't want this. No matter how clear I am, people will still misunderstand and misconstrue. There are cases of racist cops. There are cases of police brutality. There are cases of police brutality by racist cops. It is not systemic. Well, let me clarify this really quick because I'm, I'm adding this as I'm editing this video. I'm coming back to this point because I don't want this to be, again, misunderstood. When I say there's no systemic racism, I mean there's no national systemic racism where you can make the assumption or say systemically in every or most or a majority of police forces and sheriff's departments that there is systemic racism when it comes to law enforcement. I there you go, brothers and sisters. Uh, this guy's uh, video is about almost 30 minutes long. I give you about uh, six minutes or so of it. So I'm going to leave his uh, link in the description. He's got a lot of good information there if y'all want to go check him out. And I got family up here in D.C. area in Virginia and around Richmond. And what I say to y'all is uh, now's the time to bug out. Get to your safe place. This is James Sankey signing out.